And for more on the escalating tensions in the Middle East, we are joined live by military and national security expert Anthony Seaboyer. Thanks so much for making time for us. Thanks for having me. As you were watching the situation unfold and the response to it last night, Anthony, what was going through your mind on where this conflict was headed? Well, this is certainly a very dangerous escalation. We haven't seen Iran attack uh, Israel directly, certainly not with over 300 uh, drones and missiles. So this is very, very worrying, very, very concerning. Uh, and uh, it's hard, difficult to see how this will end because we have already heard that uh, Netanyahu wants to retaliate, uh, even though Biden and the U.S. administration has said that uh, they don't see necessarily a need for this because it was a full success as 99 percent of the missiles and drones were shot down. And Israel declared essentially a victory with 99 percent of it being shot down. Uh, Biden actually encouraged Israel to declare a win in this case. Why was that important, do you think? Well, I think, first of all, it is incredibly uh, important to see that 99 percent would be able to shot down. That's an incredibly high rate. Uh, that undoubtedly is a success of the systems involved, of the support also of the alliances, those supporting Israel. This, is, this was partially support of the U.S., partially support of Britain and other allies that have helped uh, to achieve this. Certainly a success. But I also think it's part of a measured response that a somewhat measured response, difficult to use these terms in this connection, but a response where Iran did know that uh, Israel would be able to take down uh, these systems, they could have striked in a way that that would not be possible. So I think uh, there was some uh, measure uh, applied here. And the question is now, how is Iran, how is Israel going to respond to this? The U.S., as I said, said that uh, they do not recommend further military action. We heard from the U.S. president last night that he would be convening a meeting of the group of seven that includes Canada. Uh, and the quote was to coordinate a united diplomatic response to this attack. What do you think that conversation is going to be like today between Canada, the U.S., the U.K. and its other allies that are part of the G7? Well, it's clear all G7 allies want uh, no further escalation of the war. They want to not to see a military confrontation escalating in the region. Uh, this is going to be about sanctions. So what can be done to further isolate uh, Israel uh, to further deter them? Because what this clearly shows as well is this was a failure in deterrence of uh, Israeli deterrence and U.S. deterrence of preventing Israel from uh, taking such a strike. So it's going to be about what sanctions can be deduced, what diplomatic measures, uh, what form of isolation can be deduced uh, uh, to Israel at this point but to Iran at this point. Iran has always been kind of viewed as a wild card Hezbollah Hamas essentially operating as its proxies across different parts uh, of the Middle East along with various other uh, groups as well. When it comes to the warning from Iran for Israel for the United States not to escalate any further what do you make of that warning saying they'll fire back essentially? Well, I think that's what we've seen. Uh, they're under pressure as well domestically. We've seen the the, uh, the many people on the streets in Iran uh, cheering on the attacks. Uh, so there is popular support uh, for an attack uh, at this point, for sure, uh, on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, we can only hope that uh, the pressure that the U.S. is building up together with Israel and with its allies will deter Iran from further um, supporting uh, these terrorist groups in the region, funding them, directing them to attacks against uh, uh, Israel as we have seen the past weeks. Uh, certainly this was an uh, important win for Israel, Anthony, considering uh, how Hamas took them off guard back on October 7th terrorist attack infiltrating Israel's borders. When it comes to the repercussions of this attack by Iran on the Israel-Hamas war and potential ceasefire negotiations, how do you see that playing out? Well, we've seen that at the point where I'm at the moment, there's really uh, little hope right now for um, any res peaceful resolution because um, both sides are not uh, happy with the suggested uh, agreements that are on the table at this point. Hamas is requesting a full withdrawal of uh, the IDF uh, from most parts of Gaza and having the um, Palestinians resettle, come back to the areas where they live, to their homes. Uh, Israel is not agreeing to that at this point. So at the moment, we're really not in a positive, uh, or I don't see any near-time uh, peaceful solution in terms of actual uh, ceasefire agreed anytime soon, unfortunately. Last question for you, Anthony. As you're kind of watching this unfold now over the next couple of days, what will you specifically be watching for to see if perhaps the tensions can be tampered down just a little bit? 
I think the U.S. role is going to be very key. We're hearing very clear statements from Biden stronger than in the past weeks, uh, a, that they're going to, of course, support and they need to support Israel's right to defend itself and Israel's security, but also how they're doing this with helping very effectively shooting down the missiles, shooting down the drones, but also saying they will not be part of any offensive strikes against Iran, which I think is a very measured approach. And the question will be, what can be achieved with the G7, with the allies, in terms of diplomatic solutions, in terms of sanctions that will deter Iran from further attacks. All right. Military national security expert Anthony Seaborg, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Thank you.